Hi there! Time for another quick vintage computer video. This is going to be a relatively short one. I'm not going to do any design here. I'm just going to try this thing out and we're going to get a quick look at it. This is the latest thing I bought off of eBay. This is a Heathkit H47 uh, disk drive. This 8 inch floppy drive. So if we open it up, uh, right there, the very large vintage 8 inch floppies. Okay, here's a view down from the top. It's, it's kind of hard to see in this thing. This thing is huge. I have my camera positioned way up high. I hope people can see a little bit. I had to cover up a couple spots here because the previous owner had written his social security number on the drives. He also wrote the social security number on the lid on the underside. More trusting time 40 years ago maybe. I would not write my social security number on a piece of uh, computer equipment these days. But anyway, you've got these two Remax drives. Now, interesting, the, the body for these is plastic. I've been told that's a little bit bad from an alignment uh, stability sort of standpoint that, you know, these things, um, they, they could be, they could go out of alignment because of the plastic, maybe it uh, drifts more than the metal. I don't know. What is that? I don't know why there's, oh, it's just a, He's plastic sitting there. Who knows? Um, anyhow, um, there's a power supply over here. There's a big transformer down in there. There's a couple of big fans on the back. When I crank this thing up, they're going to make a lot of noise. Um, gigantic capacitors. Now the two drives are different. I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the camera loose and maybe get another angle on it so people can see in there. So if you look at this drive here, this this one here, this actually drive one. It's got a cable here that comes out and runs to the, the connector on the back of the board. And that is the interface cable that will go over to the H8 computer. It's also got, you know, some kind of a, a chip there with its programming software in it. Um, so this, this controller here on this first drive interfaces with the computer. The second controller does not have that connector, does not have that uh, program chip, whatever it is. It is just a secondary, some kind of a slave drive. There is a cable that goes between the two, as well as goes out to a connector on the back there, which would be maybe how you'd plug in additional drives. So, like I said, a little bit interesting. At some point, maybe I'll tear this out. You know, we're looking at the first drive again. At some point, maybe I'll tear these drives out. I'd like to image that ROM chip. I'd also like to just get a better picture of it all. Okay, to get this thing to work, you actually need a controller board in your H8 computer. So let me pull this controller board out. The, uh, the disk unit's over here, so this is the computer. Um, anyhow, this, uh, this board, uh, Norberto Collado was, was kind enough to send me a bare PC board for this, which I assembled. It's got a bunch of discrete logic on it, a PLD that does some of the addressing, and then it comes out via this 40-pin cable, which runs over to the H47. And I'm not going to talk much about this controller board. Uh, Norberto's got this up on his website. If you want to have a look there, you can find the schematics and read all about the H47 controller board. Thank you, Norberto. Okay, so I'm going to format the disk for the new H47. We're in the second drive, which is called DK1. I'm running the init tool. I have formatted this disk before, as you can see, but I'm formatting it over again so that we can see the process. Entering a new label so that it looks different this time. Double density, yep. And you can hear it seeking. It's going to seek through all the tracks. Then about halfway through, it'll make a loud clunk and then seek through all the tracks again. Maybe it switches heads from one side to the other. I'm not quite sure what happens, or maybe it's a verify pass. It's, it's not really going to give me the output, but we're almost to that 50% point where you'll hear the big clunk, and it'll uh, repeat a bunch of seeking again. There it goes, and now it's uh, doing this sort of second set of um, seeking or formatting or whatever's happening here.
there, and now we're getting the prompt for the bad sectors. If something went wrong in the format, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't get that prompt. I've noticed before with a bad disk, it would would abort at that point. Here, we'll we'll tell it to format again, and we'll see that our new disk label is there. It's not actually formatted. It. And now let's go ahead and sysgen that disk. So at this point, it's copying the operating system over from um, the compact flash onto the 8-inch floppy. I get that same problem every time I run sysgen, but if we look at the disk, it's it's fine. There we go. There's the directory. Now I'm going to copy uh, basic over from uh, compact flash to the 8 inch. There we can see basic is now sitting there. Typo. And basic is readable. So let's exit out of there. Be careful to dismount. And we'll move the floppy over to drive zero. I should mention I've had some trouble with drive zero. That's why I started out using drive one for this demo. Mount drive zero. And look, it's readable in drive zero. And basic is loadable. Let's dismount. And we'll give it a hard reboot. This time we're going to try to boot from it. Now it actually tried to boot, and we got a space prompt on on the H8 um, console. And it did some seeking, and then aborted. And it's stuck there. Now all of every other time I've tried to boot, what happens here is it just nothing. I mean, no activity, no seeks. It just sits there um, dead. And I can do that as many times as I want. It's going to do the same. Not quite sure what's what's wrong with the boot at this point. Happens when trying to boot from the other floppy as well. Okay, that's the end of this very short video. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, having a look at the Heathkit H47. This thing was an absolute beast to carry up to the office. It's very heavy, but it's also pretty fast, and it uh, stores like about a megabyte per disk, which is which was pretty darn good for the time. If you came from the H17, which stored considerably less. Per disk and was uh, substantially slower than this. Um, this would be a massive upgrade. Heathkit sold these for about 2,700 bucks a piece. Uh, that was if you put it together yourself. It's about 3,500 if you wanted it assembled for you. So anyway, a few steps from here. I do want to get to the bottom of the booting issue. I'm sure the SEBHC guys can help me out with that. Could very well be operator um, error, or it could be that I am using an old version of the boot monitor, something like that. Anyway, we'll get to the bottom of that. I may also pull out that drive zero and give it a thorough cleaning and check out, because I, as I mentioned, there were a few things that seemed a little bit off with that particular drive. Although drive one seemed to be working pretty good to me. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.